Hey guys, I know this video is very raw and not super stable, so I apologize for the motion sickness. Uh, my Friday morning routine is to have a cigar and a cold brew coffee in the morning, usually at around 5.30, 6 a.m. I've been uh, watching the news coverage this morning and my heart just breaks uh, for the families, the people affected in Christchurch, New Zealand in this just deplorable terrorist mass murder attack and it is absolutely terrorism because it's designed to instill fear based on an ideology uh the thing is this shooter th th this terrorist doesn't really know what his ideology is and the reason i wanted to talk about this and i wish i wouldn't have to you know we did a show last night the show is going to be up later with tommy robinson i think it's very important that you listen to his story but um it's always, it's always an internal conflict when these things happen because you don't want to give this terrorist, this scumbag, um, this walking human embodiment of what you find in the bottom of your shoe any more attention. You don't want to give him what he deserves. We never, we have a policy where we do not show any of the live streaming or any of the video that these people might post of their shootings. And typically we don't post anything from their manifesto. But something that has been so deeply troubling to me is watching the media coverage this morning where they're all running, they're, they're all running with a narrative already that this can be blamed on, on Trump or on PewDiePie, that this is a, a conservative Christian extremist. I, I want to make a few things clear. If you read the manifesto, you will see this is a deeply confused person with contradictory beliefs. Um, uh, on a scale the likes of which I don't even think most people can comprehend. Um, but it's very clear in his manifesto. He, he, he writes a Q&A to himself. Are you a conservative? I'm reading it right now. No. Conservatism is corporatism in disguise. I want no part of it. He says that he is not a Christian. And he identifies as an eco-fascist. An ethno-state advocating eco-fascist. Um, I'm not hearing about that anywhere right now in the media. I understand that people are looking for an enemy. Um, and in this case, it's it's not really one that's necessarily clear cut. I think that this person's ideas are, are, are wrong and, and, and deeply troubling. But for the media to go out right now and say that this man is a Trump MAGA conservative, um, it couldn't be further from the truth. He can say that he likes Donald Trump. He can say that he likes Candace Owens, as he says in here. He, he Apparently, he might have mentioned PewDiePie. If someone goes out and, and, and shoots up a bodega and says, Bob told me to, and Bob's never met this person, and Bob wouldn't agree with this person on any of his viewpoints, Bob is not to blame. Now, it would be different if Bob had been out there for a long time saying, hey, uh, you need to go out there and perform acts of violence on behalf of eco-fascism, which is how he calls himself, uh, how he identifies, rather, or at least his ideology. That would be a different story. And it is really sad that we've reached the point. And I know that people say there's, oh, man, you just you add to this left-right paradigm. No, listen, I am conservative. I identify as conservative. I am a Christian. I've always been open about that. I understand that people are individuals, but we use labels to categorize generally to save time in a conversation. And I'm okay with the generalized label myself of conservatism, certainly as it's known in the United States. I'm a student of people like Thomas Sowell, I think is probably one of the most brilliant economists uh, of all time. Going back to uh, Adam Smith, uh, and of course I sat under the tutelage of Andrew Breitbart who condemned racism at any and all points, and I'm also namely a comedian, and I really wish that I wouldn't have to talk about this. I, I really wish that I wouldn't have to sit and pray and deliberate over whether at, at loudwithcrowder.com will post screenshots of this manifesto, because we usually wouldn't. But when I watch, well, it's a commercial right now, when I watch CNN and they run, not with the narrative, but the baseline assumption that this person is something that he's not just because they want this person to be an ally of their political enemy 
it forces me and it forces people out there with a platform and the ability to clarify the truth to speak out and say something. I don't want to make this, this scumbag famous in any way, but I do think it's necessary when the media right now is, is, is telling you want to just read the manifesto yourself. I'm reading it right now. I want no part of it. And he even goes on in a long paragraph talking about conservatism and how it's failed and how it means nothing and how he's not a conservative. He's an eco-fascist. Are you a Christian? That's complicated when I know I will tell you. These are exact words that I'm reading. And I want you to do, uh, uh, do me a favor. I want you to watch leftist media today. I want you to read the manifesto yourself. You don't need to share it. You don't need to, to, to post it for everyone to see. Um, you do whatever you're comfortable with. But I want you to read it for yourself. And I want you to contrast that with what the media is telling you the manifesto says. It's a really simple exercise. Read it. Watch the leftist media sources. Watch CNN, MSNBC, BBC. Watch, watch every single source not named uh, Fox News and a portion of Fox News. And tell me if you see the kind of discrepancies that I've been seeing um, to an alarming degree as a pattern this morning. I know we're all told that thoughts and prayers don't mean anything, but you know what? I'm a praying man. I am a Christian, and I am praying for everyone attacked. Some people saying, well, you've criticized the Quran. You've criticized Islam. Are you praying for... Mo of course I'm praying for Muslims who've been shot, innocent people. Uh, I, I don't know exactly who, who's been been um, murdered, uh, but I assume some women and children are there. Uh, of course. Of course I'm praying for them. And it breaks my heart, as it should break the heart of anybody out there. And this is... There's nothing wrong with being conservative or being liberal. There's nothing wrong with um, finding camaraderie in people who share your ideas. It's okay to be a conservative. It's okay to be a liberal. It's okay to identify as socialist. And then we can disagree. But there is something wrong with mislabeling people, uh, which is what this guy wanted. This guy wanted to create division. It's antithetical, for example, to change my mind. The change my mind segments uh, are about asserting your viewpoint and rationalizing it and not hiding from it. A lot of people mistake change my mind as, as finding common ground. No, it's not. It's not. As you can see in the recent one, we, we have another one coming out to, on Monday with several different people on a college campus regarding abortion. Some of the conversations were civil and productive, and some of them weren't. Some of them, uh, people just sat down and it was a screech fest. But it is antithetical to this idea of dividing the country for clicks dividing the country for uh, a dwindling viewership base on, on your news network. You know, I, I know this isn't, this isn't particularly articulate. This is early in the morning when I'm, when I'm taping this. But when I watch the media coverage of this, of these kinds of, of atrocities, and I see their inability, and, and it's not the fault of all the hosts, by the way. Actually, there's a host there on CNN who I'm watching right now uh, on a panel. And I know this person, I know this is a good person, but I know that they are hamstrung. I know that they can't actually go out and say, no, this is specifically what it says in the manifesto and what we are parroting on this network right now is incorrect. They can't do that because of the way these systems of, these, these information delivery mechanisms, particularly cable news, are designed. They're precluded from the kind of honesty that our generation of Americans want, thirst for, and consume. And so, so I'm getting a text on here. And so for, for me, as heartbreaking as this is, um, it, it is heartening to see you, the, the viewers, the listeners out there, um, reject lies in seeking truth. When I see comments, when I see... Uh, tweets or I receive emails from people saying, you know what, I disagreed with you or I still disagree with you, uh, but I read up on this opposing viewpoint. I read HuffPo, I read Slate, I watched CNN, and I realized that I didn't agree with them. I realized that I wasn't getting the accurate story. That, to me, is, is progress. 
We talk about progress in this abstract sense a lot of the time that, oh, we need to make progress. We need to move past this. Well, well, well how do you do it? How do you measure it? It, it? Sometimes it takes place in baby with baby steps. And sometimes there's a giant leap forward. And I would say that the viewership of traditional news outlets that are covering this atrocity as they are right now as I sit here, their evaporation of people who watch them and rely on them, that is a huge step forward for progress and for truth. Really simple experiment, guys. I want you to read the manifesto. Comment below. Uh, tweet me what your, what your visceral reaction is to the manifesto. Then read it twice. And then tell me... Um, what you think an accurate assessment of it would be. And I want you to contrast that with mainstream news. We did the CNN 16 hour live stream a year ago was the hardest thing I ever did specifically for this purpose. I want you to do that yourself today. Just have the media on like a morphine drip, but only do it after you've read this manifesto for yourself and, uh, and, and see if you see what I see. Love you guys. Uh, new change of mind coming out Monday. And again, uh, prayers to the families affected. Um, this is just awful.